What's up everybody, it's your boy Val here for a new video about Premiere Pro. It's a software I use every day to uh, edit videos and I've had an uh, issue with it for a little while that uh, it's been driving me crazy about the way it uh, manages colors, the way there's color shift between the sort footage when I look at it in preview, when I look at it in quick time, and then the way it looks inside Premiere, and then the way it looks when I export the video and I watch it on YouTube. Uh, it's all like a tiny bit of difference everywhere. I was driving me mad. Uh, if you're on a Mac it happens for video and uh, on both Mac and Windows it's gonna happen for some pictures but not all pictures it's actually two different problems I'm gonna tell you the solution for both of them I'm gonna look at those pictures first and I'm gonna deal with the video right after uh, it's two different problems if you care only about the video problem on a Mac uh, jump, I put the time code in the description, you can jump right away to this and if you're having the problem with a still picture I'm gonna talk to it right now so let's import those two pictures inside Premiere. We're gonna look at it actually. Here we have uh, one picture I took with my camera. I edit in Lightroom, I export from Lightroom. Uh, and I have one picture I just took with my phone. Here it's my homie Alex, we're in Dominican Republic drinking Mama Juana. Uh, very cool trip. Anyways, this picture has got an embedded sRGB color profile. If you care about a bit of the technical details, this picture, it doesn't have an embedded profile. It's also sRGB, but it doesn't tell you about it basically. Uh, Premiere is gonna treat both of those pictures very differently. Uh, so now they're imported. If we look at them actually in the source monitor here, they both look perfect. It's uh, actually something to note. But if we make a timeline, we add them both over there. Uh, this picture I'm gonna set to frame size so it looks the same uh, so we can see all of it. And one thing that you notice if you're a perfectionist like me, if you like uh, look at the details, uh, the picture on the left, it looks darker, more contrasty, more colors than the picture on the right, which is kind of washed out if you want to double check this kind of stuff. Uh, we go here, we make the picture about the same size and we overlay to this. So I'm gonna make it a bit higher something like this. You can see here it matched, it's exactly the same. If we put it uh, here though, it's not, it's washed out. You can see clearly the colors are not the same, the contrast is not the same. But if we were to take this picture, uh, this picture of my buddy Alex, and you can see, we go here, the, well, it's not like right above it, I'm gonna put it right above it, and you can see now it's exactly the same in the timeline, it's also exactly the same in the preview. Uh, so that's good. So Premiere is doing something when the color is uh, with an embedded color profile. Uh, I'm not gonna go in details about why because it's gonna take way, way, way too long. The thing you do though is you right click on the picture in the source when you notice this issue. You go in interpret footage, you go color space override and you tell it it's Rec 709. Even though technically it's not Rec 709, I know. Uh, but if you tell it it's Rec 709, it's gonna basically not change anything about the picture. It's not gonna try to process it. It's not gonna try to convert or adapt it. And it's just gonna look good. I don't know why I closed this preview actually because I wanted to show you again. Okay, it's still there. Good. Uh, I can overlay it again over there and now you can see the colors match exactly. It's, uh, it's what we want. So we're happy about that. That's the color issue thing. Uh, if you want to know in more details what's happening, it's gonna take a few hours. I'm gonna put a survey down below in the description. You can check it out and if enough of you are interested into it, I make a course, I send you an email so you can buy it when it's ready. Uh, and then I tell you all the details uh, that it took me a week to gather and to understand why it's behaving that way. Uh, but if you don't care about the details, you know the fix. And if you want to know if a picture is color managed or not, you right click here, you go get info, you have something similar on Windows because this program is applying on Windows as well and the solution is exactly the same. Uh, you look at color space here, this one is just tell you RGB but there's no color profile. So that means there's no embedded profile. Premiere is not gonna touch the picture, it's not gonna adapt it, not gonna change anything, it's gonna look good on the exported video. So this one it says color profile sRGB, that means Premiere is gonna try to convert it to Rec 709 and it's gonna make it look different. That's where we get this color shift where it looks washed out. Uh, you know how to fix it, you go right click, modify interpret footage and color space override Rec 709, I know it's a lot of things. But now you do it for every picture that it looks washed out inside Premiere where it should it doesn't look the same as in preview, uh, that in everything else basically. You do that, it's fixed, it's gonna be looking good on the video. That's all you need to know. So now we're done with that, let's go into the video. Uh, the video issue is something very specific to macOS, uh, especially to QuickTime. It's very, it's known as the QuickTime Gamma Shift, but it's actually a problem with uh, macOS ColorSync utility. 
color sync utility is what uh, Mac OS use for managing colors in general. So like all the application on your Mac that are color managed, they're gonna go through color sync to output something to the screen basically, whether it's picture, whether it's video. And in the case of video specifically, Mac OS color sync uh, changes the gamma compared to everything else. So everything is displayed as sRGB with a gamma of 2.2 normally. Uh, and when it's about video, um, color sync decides to put a gamma of 1.96 for some reason. It's like uh, inconsistent with everything else, literally. Like if you take a Windows computer, a Linux computer, or if you take your Android phone, if you take even iPhone, it's all gonna be looking the same. And uh, if you take just Mac OS uh, color manage application like QuickTime, like Chrome, and now like Firefox, it's gonna have a tiny color shift and you can look at this. I'm gonna uh, drop this video right here inside Premiere. We're gonna make a new sequence and we're gonna overlay it. So I'm gonna take my QuickTime video, I'm gonna put on top. It's not as much of a difference than with the picture. It's not the exact same kind of shift. Basically, you look at this and then you click on Premiere. You can see it's darker inside Premiere. And it's like QuickTime, it's uh, not washed out really, but it's, uh, the colors are a bit different, the contrast is a bit different. Uh, and we can see that in particular if we, uh, if we look at the bars and tone um, footage. I'm gonna make a new sequence for this. So that's the standard uh, RGB bars. And uh, if you open it in QuickTime and you put it on top, actually we don't even need to put it on top, I'm gonna use my friend the color meter, the digital color meter on macOS. Uh, and I'm gonna tell it to display sRGB values. Now my screen is set in sRGB color profile as well, so it's, they're both gonna be the same. Uh, if your screen is color managed, if you have a color calibration, uh, it's gonna look, uh, it's gonna be different values here, that's normal. I don't want to go in details about that because there's actually a lot going on here. If you're interested about this, let me know in the comments below or fill the survey below. And if there's enough people, I make a course about this because there's a lot of technical stuff going on. But anyways, if we look inside Premiere, this is 102, 102, 102 in terms of color. You can see the RGB colors down there. Uh, that's exactly the way it's supposed to be. That's the standard color we want for this gray on the top left here. If we look at it inside QuickTime, it's 114, 114, 114. Uh, it means QuickTime is altering the video at the display level, like the, the raw color inside the video is uh, 102, 102, 102. That's the, what's in the pixel data in the video, in the MP4 file. Uh, that's what we want. The video is good. The data inside the video is good. Just QuickTime displayed in a different way. Uh, actually, we saw it's color sync, so it's gonna. If you open this in Firefox, if you, if you open this in Chrome, uh, on YouTube, for example, it's gonna look the same as well. We're gonna be the 114, 114, 114 for this gray here. So the gray is a bit lighter than it should be. Every color is gonna be a bit lighter than it should be when viewed with color sync, color manage application on a Mac. There's no fix for this. That's the way Mac decided to handle video for some reason. They handled it differently than iPhone. They handled it differently than Android, than Windows, than Linux. For some reason, I don't want to go into the details about this. It's just something to keep in mind. It's always gonna look a tiny bit brighter when viewed on a color managed application on a Mac like QuickTime. Uh, you can't really fix it. The only way to fix it is to burn in the difference inside the raw video. And when you do this, it's gonna be fucked everywhere, but in QuickTime and on color manage application on a Mac. So I don't really like this solution. It's the solution, the solution that you have, for example, uh, is called QuickTime Gamma Shift LUT. Like you have LUT to compensate for it. And it does compensate for it in your output file. It's gonna burn the opposite modification, the opposite transformation of the color is gonna make everything a bit darker so that when QuickTime is gonna make it a bit lighter on the output, it's gonna basically make up for it and look the way it looked inside Premiere for you. Uh, I don't like that idea. It's only working if you're, um, if you're delivering only for macOS computers for being viewed inside QuickTime or inside color managed application on a Mac. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Since I know that this, uh, this color shift is not actually an issue inside the pixel data, my video is fine, I know my exported video is fine. It's looking consistent on every single system out there except macOS color managed application. It's fine, I, I learned to accept it. It's always gonna display it a bit brighter than everything else. I don't care about it anymore. I know my video is not fucked, I am happy with that, that's the main thing that matters to it. Everything else is consistent on Windows, on Linux, on iPhone, on Android, that's good. 
So, uh, so that's it. That's all you need to know about it. If you want to know the details into why with like the Rec 709 uh, standard compared to sRGB and the way Premiere deals about it, uh, the way it works as well when you go in preference general and you tick display color management, do you want to tick this box or do, should you not tick it? It depends actually if you're exporting for sRGB or for broadcast standard. It makes a hell of a difference. It depends what kind of screen you have as well. If you have a sRGB screen, if you have a P2 display, it's going to be a bit more fucked up. If you have a proper a Rec 709 monitor, a standard calibrated broadcast monitor, it's not gonna be the same thing. And as well, if you have actually color uh, profile your monitor, if you, uh, if you go in preference, system preference uh, displays, uh, color, and you have like a proper color profile here, for me it's not calibrated, but if it was calibrated, properly you would have a specific color profile here to your monitor uh, everything is gonna behave a tiny bit differently and you're gonna notice even more of those shifts so if in this video I didn't answer all your questions it's probably because of that uh, if you're interested in the solution I know the technical reason why all of this is happening I can teach you about it it's just gonna take a few hours uh, and for this I need to make a proper course about it if there's enough people interested tell me in the survey down below if you're interested I'll make the course, I'll send you an email if you drop me your email down below uh, so that you know about it when I make it. Uh, my video is out of battery so I'm gonna continue right away like this, I'm done anyways. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you want more content like this, don't forget to put a thumbs up on this video if it helped you and I'll see you in the next one, have an awesome day, uh, peace.